Hey guys, CT Stealth here, and I've been asked to, uh, to help with the set, setting up the set driven keys via using this controller. While maintaining that offset, uh, in the last video I actually just made the loop, and um, I got some questions about uh, how to actually link the two together. And it's actually, it, it's it's a little bit easier, but um, with with the last few videos that we've been doing, it kind of shows you the thought press processes that you go through to try to solve a problem. So in most cases, when I solve these types of problems, I would do all of that too to try to figure out. Because see, my you always want to start small, and when you don't know what you're going to be expecting, like if you you don't want to immediately jump to okay, I want the controller or the influence loop. You need to be like, well, how am I going to set up the loop? So that would be the first thing. You know, I would go through my options and weigh them based on that, and then I would actually try to make them loop. And then once I got to make them loop, I will see what it's doing to make it loop and then connect it. So um, this is, I redid this, but um, this is basically, it's still looped it's based on the last video and I've only got three here. I made sure that I named them. That's number one. So this one's, uh, this is the first tread, meaning it's the leading tread, and then tread one and tread two, and I did it in that order, so I know, you know, maybe maybe this tread has like a hole in it. It might need like a little bit of a kink, so I might have to set up a curve or something. I don't know. But uh, it's always kind of important that you have everything organized and you don't have random numbers. So I numbered them all. Now, um, to, now that we actually have the loop, um, getting from the loop to the set driven keys is an easier, it's an easier task now because now we just have to do the connections. We have to understand what is going on. So, uh, for the first thread, we have a U value going from zero to one, but it's taking place over 400 something frames. Yeah, 400 frames. So. What does that tell us? Well, that's telling us that okay, we have we we cannot exceed one or zero for one. So the motion path, no matter where I'm on the line here, it will never be greater than one, even when it goes to loop. But if I select the other treads and look at them in comparison, you'll notice that the lines are actually parallel. So they are offset by a certain number. I want to, I don't remember what I offset it, but I'm just, it looks like 20, maybe? So, it looks like the 20 offset. So, they're parallel. They're always between 0 and 1, and they are offset by 20. So, each one of these keyframes are exactly 20 frames apart. So, we need to try to replicate that when we do the driven keys. So, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the motion paths, and I'm going to set this to 0. Because setting it at zero makes all of my U values should be roughly zero, except for you know these because they're over there. They're on the forward side of the, the loop. So I'm actually going to break this connection, break connections here, and I'm going to make that zero. Then I'm going to break this one, and then this one, and I'm going to null these values out to be zero. So they're all at the same spots. Now I need to set up the set driven keys. You already saw what the graph looked like with the loop. So now I'm going to go to the where's that uh, animate set driven keys, and then we go to set. So this will be my driver, load driver, and I'm going to grab the first thread here, and then the motion path of one and load driven. Now this is pretty much where I want it, so I'm going to go. Let's see what the this is the rotate x. So the rotate x is going to influence the u value. And I'm going to hit key. Then I'm going to go to the motion path one again, and this time type one, and then I'm going to rotate this 360 degrees. So now it's in the exact same spot. And I'm going to have to retype that to 1. And then I'm going to key that. So now what I should get is this. All right, no loop. No loop yet. 
right? Now, I'm going to set that back at zero, and I'm going to grab the second tread here, and I'm going to horse my set driven window. Okay, now I'm going to grab the motion pad two, and load driven, <coughs> motion pad two, and then U value, and then grab that, make sure it's on zero. It is. Hit key. Then I'm going to rotate this to 360 degrees and go to motion path 2 again and type in 1 exactly. Hit key. And now they should both be going at the same speed. And they should be. So that's exactly what we want. There's, it's a straight line and it's never catching up to one another. Not, nothing's dragging. Uh, so, all right, we have, we have captured the exact same slope, what we wanted. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the second one here. So, motion path, U value, is this at zero? Yes, it is. So, let me grab this again. And hit oh, load driven, grab this, grab that, hit key, rotate this 360 degrees. And then grab the motion path three, hit one, and then hit key. So now they're all going the same distance. Okay, let's get it to loop. All right, so that that's something we've already done for. So now we'll just go. Okay, hey, grab these. Go. Is infinity turned on? Turn that on. Pre-infinity cycle, post-infinity cycle. See if it's looping. Missing that one. Must have not grabbed it. So let's grab this one, this one, and this one. And then grab these. You gotta make sure you grab them all. Cycle. Cycle. Alright. And now when I do this, okay. So now they're going, they're looping. All right, so no matter what number I type, thousand, it's looped. It tells me exactly where it's at. Good. But now they're all on the same plane. They're in the exact same spot, but we've captured the slope. So since we, <clears throat> since we captured the uh, slope, what I can do here is uh, I can grab these three here, and now they're all listed in my graph editor. And I can space them to how I like it. So I'm just going to minimize these. And I'm just going to grab this one. So this means it's no longer visible. Now this is the first tread. So it's going to be between 0 and 1, but it's not going to be offset. The second tread, though, and, and, and the first and second treads are going to be offset. So I'm going to grab my Move tool. And I'm going to hold down Shift and then Middle Mouse button. And I'm going to oh, make sure you select them. And... So I'm hold down shift, middle mouse button, and then drag to the left, and I'll move the, uh, you'll notice that the, the, the curve is moving. So I'm just going to undo that real quick, and then grab this, but there's also these up here. So it's going, that's at 360 at the maximum, and then 1 at the beginning. So I want this to be offset by 20, so it disappeared. Well, all right. Well, then I'll just count them. So, like, you can see it at the lower left-hand corner where it says time offset. Here, so, like, look right here, and you can see the counter. And it's counting up slowly. All right, so I can count that to 20, and then I'll grab tread 2, select them, and I'll count that one to 20. Do, 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 there. All right, so now you'll notice that I have an offset here. And now you'll notice over here that they're now separated. So now I can just do this. Do, do, do. And then you feel pretty pro for making a loop and doing the set driven keys. Now, there's probably an easier way to do, like, the offsetting portion. But uh, I haven't really looked at it, to be honest. So uh, typically you can just... Try filling around with this. Um, I'm not 
not really sure how it's going to work. Let's see, we're 10. Uh, it's not letting me move the keys, so that just tells me that it's just being finicky, to be honest. So maybe you have to move something individually. No, I, I haven't really looked at it, but um, that's pretty much it. So um, I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.